Right now there are something, depending on who you talk to, between four and 7,000 chemicals in the smoke that people exhale in the secondhand smoke. And many of those items are carcinogenic. If your next door neighbors are non-smokers and you continue to smoke in your apartment, you could be making them sick. You could contribute to all sorts of diseases that they might contract. You could even contribute in some way to their death because secondhand smoke kills. In 2009, the housing authorities are notified by HUD, which is the Department of Housing and Urban Development, our major source of funding, uh, suggesting that housing authorities consider a smoke-free policy. I received a phone call from the executive director of the Providence Housing Authority asking me to attend a meeting. And the meeting was about smoke-free housing and really didn't know much about it. Um, so I attended the meeting in Newport, Rhode Island. And the theme of the meeting was stopping smoking in public housing units themselves, you know, opposed to just the general areas of a building. So I ended up getting quite a bit of information at the meeting. I brought it back to the executive director. And, uh, and he asked me to poll the rest of the managers that work at the agency uh, to see how they felt about stopping smoking in some of the developments. I ended up talking to him a little bit about it and how we could implement it and all that. And ultimately, we ended up a smoke-free program in all the housing authorities' elderly high-rise buildings. The funding for the smoke-free policy uh, originally came from the Centers of Disease Control and then funneled down to the Mayor's Substance Abuse Prevention Council and the Department of Health. There were other sub-awardees like the Providence Housing Authority, such as the Providence Community Health Centers. There was um, advocacy solutions and uh, community-based organizations. So there were many, many sub-awardees that came together and worked together very, very well. It was important to enact a no-smoking policy because for public health reasons, I, I think it's beyond any reasonable doubt now that smoking is harmful to the health, not only to the individual smoking, but through secondhand smoke to other residents in these buildings. But also the cost to the housing authority, which is something that probably I didn't consider that much, um, but once I saw some of the numbers on paper, it's like, you know, um, smoking causes the walls to turn yellow in apartments and smells to get in carpets and fires that happen in the kitchen, or people falling asleep in bed and, you know, lighting the place up. Um, so all those issues were there, and it sort of made sense that as a landlord, it's really a good idea um, to implement you know a smoke-free environment. I've noticed that we're always one of the first in line to implement policies to take on challenges. The, the mission for the Providence Housing Authority is to provide healthy living conditions for our residents and a smoke-free ban will definitely uh, do so. To put together a task force of key people in the Housing Authority including myself as executive director our, our legal team, some of our, our site managers and our resident service coordinators. And we meet occasionally to discuss policy and uh, to look at how well the program's uh, being implemented. So it brought in different people um, with different expertise to talk to staff about how to implement it, what are the best things you know, to, to do with people, how to encourage people to come, and then let them know what our problems were so we're all around the table at the same time. My role was to not only research what a smoke-free policy was and what it meant to the Providence Housing Authority, but to incorporate our residents and our communities into that research. There is an issue uh, with smoke-free public housing and it's what's talked about on the news and if you look into articles it's what's talked about. Do, the, do residents have the right to smoke? And then they came to me and asked me to um, look into the legalities uh, and many questions came up obviously and months of research went into, um, into creating policy and lease addendums and things of that nature and um, researching tenants' rights, smokers' rights, and non-smokers' rights as tenants. In the beginning, I was against the smoke-free policy. I felt this was my home, this was my place to live, and I felt that why should somebody tell me what I can do in my own home? But for people that's been a good tenant, living here for 15, 20 years, 
And never, they didn't have any intentions. It didn't even cross their mind to quit smoking. And then one day they come and say, well, this is going to be smoke-free. You're going to have to stop smoking. I just don't think it's fair. In my research, I found that um, smokers are not a protected class. Um, so the American with Disabilities Act, they, it does not, um, they, they don't have to follow any, they don't come under that guideline. But on, on the other hand, non-smokers, um, if we didn't institute a policy like this, non-smokers could actually sue us if they were to get effects from secondhand smoke, for example. The outreach was extensive. It lasted about nine months. So there are five buildings involved. Each of them has a community room. We went to resident association meetings. We went to resident management meetings. We went to our own meetings just about smoke free or just about quitting. From there, we did a pre-policy survey. And we surveyed all five buildings. We had a 35% return rate where we found that 83% of our respondents supported a smoke free policy. I was surprised um, at the feedback that we got from the surveys, how many people that um, did agree with the non-smoking policy, um, and I was surprised by the smokers who agreed with it also. Without getting the tenants involved up front so that they understand what's coming, why it's coming, you know, talking about um, saving money in the apartments and things like that are all things that I shared with the tenants at my meetings. It's things that we talked about, you know, why do you want to quit smoking? And, and I don't even know if some of the smokers in the building realized that it was bothering the other tenants till we sat down and had meetings and the other tenants said, well, yeah, I don't like people smoking. I, I really am bothered by people blowing smoke out their windows. And the tenant blowing smoke out the window is like, I'm blowing it out the window. It's not bothering anybody. But, you know, in fact, it really was. And so I think that the two groups kind of realized that, hey, wait a minute. As a part of our smoke-free housing um, program, we offer residents and their families free smoking cessation services, which include nicotine replacement therapy as uh, patches, gum, and lozenges. We want to implement a policy that says you can't smoke, but at the same time, we want to help you quit because we know it's very difficult for you to quit. With that information that we collected with all of the comments and the concerns and the feelings of our residents, as well as the uh, results of the pre-policy survey, we were then equipped with something to go to the Board of Commissioners and say this is how our population feels about it. This is what our community shows. The uh, residents on our Board of Commissioners were at first very reluctant to initiate this policy and the good news is that they have since been won over and in fact two of the three that voted against it are active participants in the program. So you got to put that in your mind that uh, you're interfering with somebody else's health and it's not good. And it's a dangerous thing. When I look at it now, I, I say to myself, it's a good idea. I don't see where you can pass something without talking to residents first. I did vote against it. And when I did my meeting, I brought it up. And I was very surprised. 95% of the people in this building approve it. So I brought that back to the board. That's when I changed my decision. So the written material or the marketing element of a policy implementation is really important. Step by step, always have some sort of written material uh, with a lot of visuals for your residents. We had a coming soon announcement flyer, always bilingual. We had a newsletter with a picture of an elderly couple uh, with an explanation of why a smoke-free policy was important to the Providence Housing Authority. We had flyers for smoking cessation services or quit programs, pictures of the, um, the women who would be holding or conducting the sessions. Um, other materials that we handed out at some of these meetings were educational pieces on secondhand smoke, how they affect you, how they affect your neighbor. Another important flyer that was created was a frequently asked questions flyer. We did in English and Spanish, and it entailed questions that most people would ask. So the, the main documents are the, again, the notice. Notice is just huge. And um, the lease addendum and then, and then the warnings that go out and let them know that they violated the lease. 
we designated an in area on the property where people could smoke. So no smoking in any apartment, no smoking in public areas. And we actually poured foundations with cement platforms and put benches in for an area where tenants were allowed to smoke. The only place on the property that people could smoke. So we had to actually change the lease and do an amendment to our dwelling lease saying that you agree you will not smoke in your apartment um, or you will suffer the consequences, which in this case, the housing authority had a, a fine system. Um, it started three steps actually. The first one was just a written warning saying, you know, you realize you're not supposed to smoke in your apartment. The second one was if they called down again, a $50 fine. And then the third one was we'd move to evict the family if they continued to, you know, be habitual, violating the policy. So um, we ended up putting that in effect. We had every tenant in the whole building sign uh, amendment to the dwelling lease so that that way, um, you know, it would be enforceable if they failed to, to comply. I think people, are, you know, with the education that you get just from TV and whatnot, people want to quit. But I think this program and even the rule that came down with the zero tolerance policy on smoking in our buildings gave that maybe added push for people to take the initiative and actually quit. Part of this program is really about getting people to believe that they have the personal power that they may have abdicated to this addiction and being able to find a way to get them back to that place where their self-esteem is a little bit higher, they feel that they can do something about it, they feel like even if they have a relapse that they can go forward. I'm a smoker and um, they told me that the classes were going to be offered for us for free as well. So that's how I started to get into that class. My mom was a heavy smoker and she smoked, she's about 45 now and she's been smoking since she was about 10. And she woke up when I was pregnant. She woke up one day and just said, my grandson's coming, I want a different life for him. I'm going to quit smoking. And she quit smoking cold turkey. I loved my son dearly and I knew that he was coming, but I didn't know the effects that it could have. And once I learned that, I was like, you know, I can do this. I have to do this. I've tried to stop so many times, especially when I got sick, but I went back to it. I saw my doctor maybe about three days ago and he came in very happy telling me that um, my lungs are cleared. He was so happy that I've stopped smoking. People are getting this message and they are empowering themselves. We're just a tool in that process. We don't empower people, they empower themselves. There are several factors that led to the success of the smoke-free policy. And first and foremost, of course, was I designated someone as the coordinator who spent the proper amount of time uh, working on di different tools, including presentations to the residents and providing educational information to them. And also having the funds from our third party uh, funders to provide different types of services so to assist the residents in uh, quitting smoking. It was a success because the smoke-free, um, the smoking cessation classes were available to our PHA residents and continue up until September of 2012. 72 people were touched. It's the tenants that don't have to breathe in the smoke that are the real winners here. Um, the tenants that used to smoke and stop that don't have to pay $10 a pack. Those are the people that are really the winners here. Thank you, Providence Housing Authority, for implementing the smoke-free policy and uh, providing those free smoke and cessation classes. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the Providence Housing Authority for this program because it's helped me a lot. Thank you. <laughs>